Hello YouTube friends. It's that time of year again, John's birthday. Tomorrow John will be 32 and this time last year I made him a birthday cake. It was the vanilla cheesecake with the chocolate cherries. So I'm going to make him a birthday cake now. I thought you might like to join in. So the recipe I've chosen, I've just found it online, is Christina Tozzi's birthday cake recipe. Now, if you know Christina Tozzi, you'll know that she's a larger than life cook who makes the most amazing birthday cakes. Just fabulous birthday cakes. If you don't know her, I'll leave a link. Yes, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's very dark because we're shooting into the sun here. What if I put the lights on? That's a bit better. So she makes the most fantastic cakes. Uh, she, I first discovered her on Netflix. Uh, there's a program called The Chef's Table. And I think she's in the first season. And it's definitely, it might, that's what I might leave the link to. Definitely well worth a watch. So what I'm going to do then is... Um, actually, I need the bigger bowl on here. So... I need my really big bowl on here. I'm guessing we're going to be using quite a few bowls. That might be too big for these scales. No, it's fine. So I'm going to go through this recipe really quickly then. Uh, and um, just get it in the bowl and get it get start mixing it. So 55 grams of butter. Now it's an American recipe. But... Um, Oh, that's not very much butter. Oh, I don't know about that. I wonder if we should do double quantities. Yeah. So we'll do double quantities. 55 grams of butter is now 110 grass bells, more like it. That's going to make a very tiny cake, Christina. So 100... Oh, that's too much now. 110 grams of butter... Now it's an American recipe, perfect, it's an American recipe, so there's some stuff on here that I simply don't get. One of the things is 60 grams of vegetable shortening, whatever that is, and so I looked it up and it said substitutes for vegetable shortening, you can use um, butter or coconut oil, so what I think I might do is use half coconut oil and half butter, yeah that's what I'm going to do. You shouldn't really substitute things in cakes because they're kind of like a bit scientific. So if this is double, I need 60 grams. I'll just zero that. Whoops, a daisy. There now. So I need 60 grams of coconut oil. Yes, this is going to be good. You'll barely even notice this taste of coconut. 60 grams of coconut oil. There we go. And another 60 grams of butter then. I'll zero that. Yeah, that makes more sense. 60 grams of butter. So John and I and Anna are going out for a meal for his birthday tomorrow. So I'm not sure when he's going to get this cake. Because we can't really whip it out in the restaurant, can we? I mean, we can, but that would be mega embarrassing uh, of mummy so I'm not going to do that to you John why would I do that so that's all the fats there and now it says 250 grams of granulated sugar now usually when I make a cake I use caster sugar and I go to great lengths to use caster sugar but she specifies granulated sugar so I'm going to use granulated sugar it just so happens that that's what I feed my bees so we need 250 grams of this, but we need it twice. That's a lot. That's 500 grams of sugar. So that's the first 250 grams. That's too much sugar. I'm not sure I'm liking this recipe. Okay, so that's the first pack of sugar. I've just shut the cats out. I don't want them walking all over this. So this is a bit more granulated sugar. Granulated sugar. That's what she wants me to use. And 
six eggs this is going to take. Yes. So, oh, oh, don't look. Look away now. <gasps> Good God, that's too much sugar. Okay, that's going to go in here. Sugar and then 50 grams of light brown sugar. Good God, woman, how much sugar are you using? Light brown sugar. That was lucky. Thought we were going to have to go to the shops then. So that's 100 grams of light brown sugar. That's 600 grams of sugar. Yes, okay. Light brown sugar. There we go. Light brown sugar. Actually, this light is so bad, I can see in the camera it keeps going on and off. Oh, look, it's back on again. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, okay, what do you want me to do? Combine the butter and sugars in a bowl and cream together on high for two to three minutes. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna see if I can sort out the lighting while I'm doing that. I think I've got around the funky light. I've turned around the other way. And so now, I've mixed that for a long time. This is the um, sugar and butter and that little bit of coconut oil and the two different sugars. And that's lovely and mixed now. And the next thing, I'm following the recipe on my iPad. There's uh, a few more things that are not, I haven't got any buttermilk for instance. So I checked out how to make buttermilk if you haven't got buttermilk and basically you just put an acid into some milk. So I'm going to do that now. Um, one cup of milk I need. How much is that? One cup of milk. 110 grams. Well, let's do that. Because I've got the means to measure liquids here. So 110 grams, that's 220 grams. Oops, a daisy. Grams. Okay. 110 grams of... 100 what? 220 grams of buttermilk. That's there. 220 grams of buttermilk. And then into that I just put a little bit of vinegar or a little bit of lemon juice. I think I'll do lemon juice. Let's move that aside for a second. And it says a tablespoon of lemon juice. So that will be two tablespoons, won't it? I've got this funky lemon juice that you buy in the supermarket. And this will be a substitute for buttermilk, that they say. So and this isn't a tablespoon, but that's okay. Two of those. Bit of winging it going on. So that is my buttermilk now. I'm not sure. But uh, that's I'm not going all the way into Hexham to buy buttermilk. It'll do. That'll be fine. So now we need six eggs. Six eggs. I'll just give those a little mix up. What else do I need here? Grapeseed oil. Who knew? Uh, grapeseed oil is just like vegetable oil, so that's what I'm going to use. This is sunflower oil, but I can't think anyone's going to mind too much. So we need 65 grams of grapeseed oil. So that's 65, 130 by my reckoning. 130 grams of oil. Let's pop that in with the buttermilk because they all go in together. It's a very funny cake, this. 130 grams of oil. That's the liquidy things. And now, I'll go back to the recipe. Step two, step three. On low speed, stream in the buttermilk, oil and vanilla. Don't worry, I'm not going to substitute the vanilla for anything. How much vanilla do we need, Christina? Eight grams, so that's eight grams. Let's put this back on here actually. 
and I'll measure 16 grams of vanilla into here, which seems like a lot, but we'll see how we go. 16 grams, that's a lot of vanilla. She may use, oh, that's not too bad. She may use a different kind of vanilla to me. 16 grams. This is lovely vanilla. Okay, so that's all the liquidy things there. Oh, I'll put that in the eggs, never mind. It's all got to be liquid. And now, on low speed, stream in the buttermilk, oil, vanilla. And eggs, surely. Ah, and eggs. Phew. I was a bit worried that maybe the eggs weren't going in yet, but they are. Okay, then low speed. These two lots of liquid now are going in. Now I know why those people have mixers with um, guards on. Because just look at my iPad, which is where the recipe is. Can you see? I'm just going to have to clean everything off. What a mess. It's done it though. Okay, back to the recipe. I'm just checking that the camera has not been splattered. I don't think it has. Back to the recipe. So that's step three. And now I need to weigh out the dry ingredients. So the dry ingredients are six grams of baking powder. So that's 12 grams of baking powder. Let's just pop the scales back on. Six grams, 12 grams of baking powder. Whoops, Daisy. 12 grams of baking powder um, and then it says 245 grams of cake flour well I'm taking that to mean self-raising flour because that's cake flour and I'm weighing it into a sieve over a bowl so I can sieve it all and so 245 that's uh, 490 is that right? Yeah. 490 grams of flour. So I've got another bag if I haven't got enough. Oh, I have got enough. 400, whoops a daisy. 490 grams of cake flour or self-raising flour. And three grams of kosher salt. Well, I've got salt. I haven't got kosher salt particularly. Three grams. That again seems like a lot, but we'll see. And that'd be six grams, wouldn't it? I'm definitely up oh, six grams. Got six grams in and in a, in a small teaspoon. Okay, I'm just going to sieve this then, because I've got this here like this, so that I can sieve it and get no lumps. <laughs> It's pretty good flour, this stuff, but uh, I don't want any lumps in here. So while I'm sitting that, I'll just read the next part of the recipe out. So on very low speed, see I could do with a stand mixer, but I don't need one. Add the cake, flour, baking powder and salt. And then it says, now this recipe wants me to put rainbow sprinkles in. I'm not putting rainbow sprinkles in. What a surprise. You know, this is John, he's 32. Rainbow sprinkles maybe when he was 10. But instead of rainbow sprinkles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up some dark chocolate very, very fine. And I'm going to put that in. So as she wants me to put that in now, I'll actually get that ready now. I'll just do the last of this flour and baking powder. 
and then we'll just put this aside for a second while I chop the chocolate. This will be fine for a minute. I'll chop the chocolate here. I'm making a mess, but I'm making a cake, so that's all right. So the recipe says that I need 50 grams of rainbow sprinkles. So I want 50 grams of chocolate that I'm going to chop very finely. And I've got this dark chocolate here, so we'll get 50 grams of that. Um, and I'll just chop this very finely. Then, so that's in the oven now. Uh, I'll just check how long it takes. 30 minutes it takes in the oven. Now the reason why I'm making this cake is um, apart from the fact that it's absolutely delicious and to all of you who are wondering did I actually try the cake butter before it went in the oven? Yes of course I did but I'd never lick my fingers when I'm cooking. That would be gross but I did it when I was putting the washing up away. Okay then so this cake <laughs> Uh, we need a few extra things now. We need to make the birthday cake soak, which is a little bit of milk in a cup with some vanilla extract. And that is what we, uh, and then you mix that together. And that's what we brush the cake layers with in between uh, building this um, cake. Now, there are lots of different uh, options for frosting as well, or um, the, the cake, the cream, or whatever we would put in the middle. So the first one is, um, I haven't got some of the things for. Sensing a theme here. So I'm going to make it just, I'll just wing that one. But the one that I really like is the birthday cake crumb. Now in between the layers of this cake, there's a sort of crumb mixture of... Um, biscuit crumbs that I'll tell you what you do. So the, the deal with this is it's sugar, cake flour, baking powder, salt, uh, oil again and vanilla extract. I've got all of those things and what you do with that is you combine all of that and then you um, lay it on, you sprinkle it onto a baking tray and bake it for 15 minutes. So what you've got then is just a load of crinkly crumbs and they become one of the layers in the cake. So it's like a crispy crummy thing. And then uh, I do need to make some sort of uh, icing, uh, frosting to go in between the layers. And the thing I haven't got is cream cheese and glucose syrup. Actually, I might have some glucose syrup. I'll have a look but I definitely haven't got any cream cheese. Now the reason why I'm making quite a lot of cake is that I want to make the other thing that um, Christina Tozy makes. I'll find the recipe for it here. And it is birthday truffles, they're called, and you make it with leftover cake uh, crumb. So they are, I'll show you, see if I can show you the picture. It's hard to show a screen on a screen, isn't it? But there you go, they look like that, if you can see that. So these are little balls of cake crumbs, which will be the leftover bits of cake from, from when I cut this out. And um, mixed with, uh, I'll tell you what the recipe is right now. And then she has something she calls birthday sand, and it's just sugar really. So I'm gonna miss that bit out because we don't need even more sugar here, do we? So we make the cake basically and let the crumbs cool before you use them and then break them up into little pieces and then we mix that with the birthday milk which is just milk and vanilla and form them into balls and then you coat the balls in melted white chocolate which I have.
these are all the trimmings from the cake. From the cakes, so the three cakes. And I'm going to stack them all up tomorrow with the when I've made the frosting. But what I want to make now is the um, what she calls the birthday balls. They're just cake balls with um, bound together with milk and vanilla, made into little balls and put in the freezer, then covered with white chocolate. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of this in here. I'm not going to get my hands in there. I don't feel much like it. That's fine. Okay then, so this is an experiment. Um, I'm just going to use a fork as well. In fact, you guys need to be in here, don't you? So that you can see what I'm doing. There now. How's that? This is a mess, look. I'm a mess. Yeah. I know they look a mess. But they can... I'll cover those over now so the cats don't eat them. And they'll go on the top of John's birthday cake tomorrow. I'm going to bed now, after I've had that massive clear up. Now, I've made, I made one of these for Anna's birthday last year, so I do remember this part. I'm using my one of my plates from pottery but this one's really nice and flat and then we need to use some acetate which is just thin sheets of plastic like so and I need to put acetate around the tin like that so that it will extend the sides of the tin going upwards like so. You don't need to do anything with that because it just peels away afterwards. So we'll get the cakes. Okay then. So the first cake is here. And you see, okay. And just take those bits off there. And we're going to put the cake in like that. Don't worry about the acetate. I can get that back again. There it is. It's nice and straight. So it kind of got chucked in there. But that's fine. And then the cake, although it was made yesterday and it's still quite lovely and soft, what we're going to do is just put a few holes in it. She doesn't tell you to do this, but I'm thinking that the soak will go in a bit better if it's got some holes. And then I'm just going to dribble some of this vanilla milk here, like so, over the cake. Just three, four of these dessert spoons full and then the next thing is going to be some biscuit crumb we'll get a handful of biscuit crumb and sprinkle that in so that gives it a really nice texture like that and then we're going to get a handful not a handful I'm not going to do this with my hand then we're going to get some frosting so I'll get that now. I'm going to just get a nice big dollop of frosting and stick that in. And I'm going to try and judge thirds of, of this frosting. So I think we can risk a bit more in that layer. Okay, so now, um, shall we have raspberries on every layer? We'll have raspberries on the next layer. So now the next piece of cake comes and we're going to try carefully lower that in, push that down like so. Some more holes and some more, I need another spoon, some more milk, vanilla milk, I'll give it a bit of a soak. We go. Some, another way you can wet the cake is by using simple syrup, 
which is just sugar and water. So another handful of cake crumbs. Okay, and another, get very crummy with that there. Just wipe that off. Another load of frosting. I want some frosting for the top as well so that I can stick these weird ball things on. So that'll have to do for this layer, I think. But this layer is going to have raspberries uh, around it as well. It's a little bit of a red stripe. I have a lot of raspberries in that layer, like that. And then we'll get the next cake layer. Okay, so this cake now is the top of the cake. So you pop that one in there. And the acetate holds it nice and firm. Give it a press down. More holes. Oops, a daisy, wrong end. More milk. And then this has got to go in the fridge, and I'm wondering I might have to cut the acetate down because it won't go in the fridge. <laughs> it's too tall, I think. But I'm at the top of the cake now, so I'm going to use the last of the frosting. I'm not going to put biscuit crumb on this because these weird balls are going to go on top of it now. So I'll scrape out the last of this frosting. Okay then, so I did taste the frosting, it tastes fine. Okay, uh, and now we're going to make a nice job of levelling that out and really I suppose this could go in the freezer but I haven't got a big enough freezer but that would be a good place to put it especially as I'm taking it away with me in the warm car hot car it's over 20 degrees in the car today so I might find some cool packs if I can right so that's the top layer and now we're going to put these because I've made them, I suppose, we're going to put these curious things on top, which are these cake ball things. I'm going to do it because I've made them and they look ridiculous, but then what would you expect from me? Slightly ridiculous. So this is going to go on here then. And I guess that will show you how big to cut the slice so everybody gets one of those. Yeah, John's going to like this. I hope. Yeah, so I'll just put those all the way around the edge there. How many are there? Six. Yeah, I can't get another one in. Six of those, and then maybe we'll put a few raspberries in the, uh, in the edges here. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's do that. And put raspberries in here. Just making it up as I go along now. And then maybe some of those white... Um, stars that I bought they can go in the middle as well so yeah raspberries there and I'll show you the stars these these are white chocolate decorative stars I've used these before they're great yet more single-use plastic though all right really trying hard to avoid single-use plastic and it's impossible it's impossible to do if you want to make something crazy like this for your son's birthday single use stars is where is where it's at so i'm just going to sprinkle those quite a lot of those in the middle there and that so far is that so i'll cut the acetate down otherwise i don't think i'll get it in the fridge okay then so in the words of all the best soap makers, I'll bring you in for a close-up. So that's what the top looks like. It's just a little bit bonkers, isn't it? Okay, let's stick it in the fridge and keep our fingers crossed and see what that looks like. Fingers crossed. 